Here's Dunlop. Let's have a little look at the lap for Michael Dunlop. Wow, 17 minutes, 52.209, 126.681, a new RST Classic Superbike lap record. Last weekend saw the centenary year of the Manx Grand Prix come to a close in another year which saw some pulsating racing on the Snaefell Mountain course. However, outside of the racing, this year once again saw criticism of some aspects of the event as a whole, particularly around the shorter nine-day format. The organisers, the Manx Motorcycle Club, say the condensed programme, first brought in last year, was aimed at securing the long-term future for the event. However, since 2022, that argument has not won favour with some fans who believe it's hindering the races rather than helping them. So now, with MGP 2023 at an end, what does the MMCC make of the fans' views on the races and, importantly, what could 2024 look like? I caught up once again with MMCC Chair John McBride to get his thoughts. It went well. The weather disruption wasn't uh, exactly what we wanted, particularly for the centenary, but there's nothing we can do about that. We had a, obviously a, a shaky start with uh, Marshalls not being able to get here because of the, um, the disruption, the weather disruption to the steam packet. But it, uh, they managed to cover it, and uh, it was, it was all systems go, uh, and it worked out okay. But um, I, I, we've always had weather disruption, and unfortunately, it, it hit us this year. And it, and it makes the event look a little bit shabby because, you know, d- there's more clouds and that sort of thing. It makes the place look a bit miserable or even the island look a bit miserable. So, But uh, overall, the event itself from uh, uh, from an organisational point of view went off quite well, except for the, the lightweight, really. And and the uh, senior day was a bit of a... Uh, a bit of a disappointment that the delays, but there's not much you could do about that, unfortunately. We booked, we, we got all the races in eventually, despite it being a one, one to two lap lightweight. It was, uh, you know, I feel very sorry for those riders. It, uh, but uh, we've had no critical feedback from them. They, they seem to be quite, uh, quite reasonable about it. I think they understand more, more so than the spectators. <laughs> Let's get on to that then, the, um, the, the the spectators and the businesses, for example. I mean, we sat here 12 months ago having this mm. pretty much exact same conversation. So we'll revisit it now that the 2023 yes. event is done there. And um, just looking at some of the comments that have um, come to us uh, at Manx Radio through one form or another, just from uh, spectator side of things about uh, how the Manx Grand Prix went. Concerns coming up again from some people about the format, which we've, we've covered before, and some calls for it to return to a two-week format now that the event has, has played out over the space of just over a week so when we spoke to you last time you said to us that um, even you yourself weren't particularly happy with the fact that it's uh, around a one week schedule That's right. um, if it was to go back to two weeks like a lot of people are calling for what would it take to get to that it would take a lot more marshals or at least marshals who are able to uh, to spend a lot longer here um, because every most people are working and uh it's it's difficult to get everybody to stay here uh, right the way through to the, the following Friday. Medics, I mean, the UK is short of doctors, ambulance drivers, and a lot of those people tend to come to the Isle of Man as, as paramedics and as doctors. They can't spend a great deal of time here either. The TT is easier to attract some of these people, whereas the Manx, unfortunately, plays second fiddle, uh, mainly because it's you know, it, it's essentially an amateur event, and it's not so well known. I think the you know we, we, what we've got to try and do is build the event up to be well, as, as big as a TT or as close to the TT as we possibly can. Now, how 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 that'll play out, you know, with some of the negative comments going around because people do read Facebook for uh, for guidance, and if if uh, if a lot of negative comments going around, it'll it'll probably put some people off. You know, I've seen people saying, "Well, I'm not coming if this is the, all these comments and, and that sort of thing." It's uh, it it uh, tends to be uh, a self fulfilling prophecy, doesn't it? Essentially, it's it's really getting uh, the officials and uh, and everyone else. But there again, you've got to, you've got to look at the the strain on the local uh, the local environment. I mean, people are willing to accept the TT, but some people say, well, why are we putting up the same thing for the Manx Grand Prix? Which goes back again to the previous argument. And there's a strain on the on the hospital and uh, all of the other uh, services which which provides. I mean, the Manx doesn't bring in huge amounts of money compared to the, compared to the TT. And both the events only really cover their costs. 
you know, it's not it's not like uh, every every says it's a it's a money making exercise. It's not a money making exercise. It's a money recovery exercise of anything. So I think that's the uh, a big thing we've got to bear in mind. Financially, we need it needs support to continue. Uh, Isle of Man government are willing to give that support, but uh, you know there, there could come a time someday when when they say, well, we're spending all this money and and hardly anybody's coming. You know, we don't want it to get to that stage. And I think that the uh, uh, the attendance this year was pretty good. You know, I, I was a little disappointed compared to last year because I thought there was there was a good uh, a good turnout last year. But it's very difficult to tell how the event went. I don't know what the arrival figures are, but I know that you can't get on a boat for love and the money this uh, this week because everybody leaving to go home. So there must have been a, a huge number of people here. But they just obviously the weather hides them, doesn't it? But the events on the promenade on Sunday prove there are a lot of people around. And there were several events, obviously, around the the, the race yeah. and qualifying schedule to mark uh, the centenary, both uh, in and around the course uh, and beyond as well. And looking outside of that as well, we we did actually, um, as a station, speak to some businesses as well during mm. the event. And uh, some were worried that maybe they'd seen a, a bit of a downturn in, in trade, even in the Douglas area, the immediate area. So from a business side of things, is there more that maybe the Manx Grand Prix and businesses locally can do together to make it more mutually beneficial in the future? I think so. It's 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 a question of getting uh, getting people here really, and uh, from a club's point of view, the the, the Manx Grand Prix existed um, for the riders. The Manx Grand Prix, uh, the Manx Motorcycle Club, put on the races, and the tourist board, the old tourist board at the time, attracted the people here. But we had a holiday industry then, and we had a lot more bed spaces, and we had the tail end of the um, of the holiday season. So, and Douglas Carnival usually coincided with the beginning of the Manx Grand Prix, and there was a lot lot more. A lot more people about, so it might have given a, a false sense of the, the number of people who were attending the Manx Grand Prix. I remember, I mean, I was a travelling marshal and a competitor, and I've got to say, when I uh, used to go out looking around the course, uh, and you'd see little isolated groups of people around the place, and think, well, gosh, you know, is, is this is this really viable? But now, I've got to say, it's you know, there's a lot more groups of people around the course anyway now. It's certainly uh, encouraging to see more people out watching the event. Just going back to the the schedule, then people talking about um, numerous aspects of it, and one about around the ability to adapt, shall we say? I mean, we've we've touched on the weather; uh, no no one has any control over that. But uh, if weather does play into the hands, I mean, if you're in such a compact time frame, there doesn't appear to be too much room to manoeuvre. Would you agree with that? Of course. <laughs> It's something uh, we brought up at the time. I mean, the Manx Motorcycle Club, we've had to go through a lot of pain over the, the schedule changes. We really, we were dead against it, but we've had to accept it. You know, we, there's no no way, once, once it's pointed out to you that we can't get sufficient people and, uh, and what have you to run the event uh, safely, then we've had to accept it. And as, as I've said before, road racing is in, a, in dire straits in other places. You know, in like certain island and what have you, they're getting very little support from local government, etc. So we're very lucky on the island. We have a government who will support us, and I think that uh, trying to you know, trying to get more uh, business interest. You know, at one time businesses used to put things on to attract people. There's a lot of entertainment on the island. It wasn't organized, all organized by the government. It was clubs organize things and that sort of thing. The reduced uh, calendar tends to. Uh, wipe some of that out, I guess, because people will feel that they, they can't uh, squeeze everything into that uh, that small area. But at, I think we've got to treat practice week as a, as a, as a point where that could, be, uh, that could be expanded and people can come into, uh, into the island during practice week and enjoy the extended time here. I think that's probably the, the, the best we can suggest at the moment. So just to clarify from all you've, you've mentioned mm. at the moment, the, the key issues, again, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, continue to be around the challenges of trying to expand the event are largely around uh, martial and medical cover yep. and uh, the financial implications of putting on a whole event around this of which there are a numerous aspect is that correct there's numerous aspects uh, you know uh, that that they're three of the main aspects i would say we in, don't have in, that. in which we case don't... what are the others then like you said they're three of the main ones but there are other well other as I, as too. i said it's a uh, disruption to the public Disruption to the hospital, disruption to to many services and, and things like that around the island. Uh, we have to be uh, mindful of that, and you know it, it, it's no good us creating a problem. We've got to work with people, and if the Manx Grand Prix becomes a problem, then 
you know, it, it, suddenly we've got a lot of people who are anti Manx Grand Prix. If there are these these comments around it that may be critical at times about the way the Manx Grand Prix is run, I think you, you've alluded to it yourself. You you've seen the odd comments here and there on on social yes. media, for example. You have, of course, the Manx Grand Prix Supporters Club, um, who you do yes. liaise with. In terms of a wider reach to fans, those who maybe not be directly linked to the MGP Supporters Club, how do you, I suppose, involve them in more constructive conversations about finding a solution that's that's best for all parties? Well, I've spoken to Alan Brew quite a lot over the, over the Manx Grand Prix, and uh, we've uh, come up with a lot of suggestions, but we don't seem to have an answer to the um, to the Manning levels. We just don't seem to have an answer to it, and it's I think that's got to be sorted out before anything. We'd like to see perhaps an extra day's racing, but that can't happen until we can be assured that we have the, the staff to cover it. Yeah, as I say, it's not just marshalling. You've got the control tower staff. They, they've got jobs to do. Um, our race office staff, everybody, everybody connected with the event is is working, in, you know, in some area, and they need uh, they need to book it into their holidays. The event relies heavily on volunteers, and you could say, well, we should pay marshals and pay medics, but if if we did that, the, the whole thing becomes untenable. I suppose the the million dollar question I'm getting to yeah. as part of all of this is um, with the, with the schedule. I mean, how likely is it that it could be? reviewed going towards 2024 that it could be extended whether it's two weeks or another format i can't as i say the marshalling issue or the um, the, the 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 staff level issue is, is is the key to it and um we'll be talking with the marshals association and uh and motorsport medical services etc in the next few weeks to see if if things can be improved i can't say it's likely i can't make promises but uh you know we'll be aiming for that that's what we want it's just a question of being able to provide that. It, 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 the, the whole emphasis is on safety. We, we can't go back to the days when it was hit and miss, whether you had enough marshals or you had enough medics and things like that. You just can't do that. If anything, if the worst ever happens, somebody's got to stand up in front of the coroner and explain why they started a practice or a race and there's insufficient people there to, uh, to make it safe or as safe as it can be. And uh, I wouldn't like to be that person. That person at the moment is Gary Thompson, and he carries a lot of weight on his shoulders. And I, I know he comes in for a lot of flack, but all his decisions, I know, because I, I do work in the control tower, all his decisions are, are very difficult, but they're, they're taken with the interests of the event at heart. Let's move on to a slightly different side of things then, the riders. Some people say that the, the, the Manx Grand Prix, as it was obviously started out as an amateur event, that's one of the premises of it, is that it gives uh, the platform to amateurs to maybe go mm. on to TT and other things beyond that. Some people say that it's now become a, more, a bit of a platform for some of the top TT riders now, and maybe the amateurs don't quite get the same level of attention in some ways as others. What, what, what would you say about that? Well, uh, there are the amateurs are eligible to enter any of the, of the classic races. Obviously, the professional or semi-professional riders are likely to get the better machinery. And they've probably got more experience, so they're going to feature at the front end of the the leaderboard. The lightweight race, particularly, there's always been classic races, uh, but the lightweight race in particular was always traditionally was an amateur race. But there aren't the machines available now to to run uh, a an interesting race uh, without including TT riders or people who will can be loaned uh, competitive machinery. The two strokes, for example, there's not that many riders who are, you know, be, uh, who are capable I'm not saying, of riding on the TT course who own these machines now um, because they have become classics and people race them for a bit of fun. But unfortunately, those riders would have to do a lot of work to be able to qualify for the Manx Grand Prix. The level, the, the, the skill level has gone up and uh, the, you know, the level of being accepted as, as an entrant or as, a, as, a, as an entry uh, a lot higher than they, they previously were. So some of these riders now, you know, cannot cannot afford those machines. So we've had to combine the class with TT riders. But last year we had a, a good result. There was a Manx Grand Prix rider on the podium. And it's just not to say that that won't happen again. All those riders who uh, the, uh, were on the podium in, in that race were all uh, ex-Manx Grand Prix riders anyway. So, But the, uh, the junior and the senior are strictly Manx Grand Prix riders and uh, club-based riders, and they've provided the best racing of the week. They really have. They've been fantastic. And uh, I can't say... And, and the best best field of the week as well. I think that uh, we've hit a good formula in that respect for the senior and, and for the junior. Um, 
And unfortunately, racing has gone into a uh, a bit of a hiatus as far as other classes are concerned. Every, everything seems to be based around super sport and super bike. Well, super bike, we really think, is probably a little bit too much for uh, club riders. And they were they were eliminated several years ago from the Manx Grand Prix. Uh, but the super twins are an ideal bike for for. Um, for our riders on, on the TT course. And uh, one thing that was w- another noticeable change to, I suppose, the structure with the riders was the lightweight class, the introduction of the ultra lightweights as well. Yes. It resulted in a much larger field than we saw t- uh, 12 months ago. So initially, just from your own thoughts, I'm sure there'll be a bigger debrief to come, but uh, how did you feel it went in terms of um, combining those two in, in, into one race and bringing in the ultra lightweights? Yes, well, we brought the ultra lightweights in, but we uh, obviously treated the, uh, the winner of the ultra lightweight, if you like, like um, as a as a Manx Grand Prix winner, and uh, he received his his award as a winner of the um, of the ultra lightweight race, Paul Cassidy, and he was chaired in as normal. But it was really to uh, going back to the point I had before it was really to expand the field because there just aren't sufficient two stroke machines around which people were prepared to risk on the on the mountain course. And is there maybe scope, depending on what the desires are of both um, the Manx Motorcycle Club, the rest of the organisers and fans, is there more scope to Extend it maybe more. I mean, seeing some of the comments, some people asking, you know, 350s, for example, as uh, whether it's a class or incorporated somewhere else. I mean, do you think that might be a conversation that happens down the line over the next 12 months? Do you mean 352 strokes? Not so, not, as, not yeah. specifically. That was just, you know, just one comment that was seen. I'm not talking oh, just right, a, right, yeah. not just that class, but, you know, yes. hypothetically in any class in yeah, terms I mean, of if, if there's a, expanding. If there's a... Yes, I mean, if, if there's a, uh, a machine available, we, we tried a, as, a, as a club to encourage the Moto3 class, but we got a, not a lukewarm response. We, 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 well, it, we got very few, and they're very good around the island. They, they really are. They're, they're sort of on a par with the uh, 400s, Supersport 400s. So I suppose they go into a class with that, but trying to bring enough on to have a class of its own, you know, it, it it just isn't working at the moment and it doesn't seem to be working anywhere else either. With all that we've covered so far, I suppose from your side of things now, I'm sure there'll be uh, much more information and discussion to come over the next uh, weeks, months, up to up to, hmm. the, up to MGP 2024 as it stands. You've insisted that this year will not be the last Manx Grand Prix we see. So um, how much can you reassure people that the Manx Grand Prix is returning in 2024? It's, as far as the Manx Motorcycle Club's concerned, it is returning in, in 2024. We're starting to plan the 2024 event now. There have been discussions about that even before the other, uh, before the, uh, the centenary ended. It really is a question of support. I mean, I, I, I hope everybody can get behind the current format because that's the only way that we're going to actually uh, increase the, uh, the duration of the event. If people aren't behind it now, it's not going to expand. Uh, and that, that's the that's the whole top and bottom of it. Uh, the new format was introduced to to ensure uh, the future of the event. It wasn't some plot to, to to destroy the event. It was it was really to make the event more manageable and to and to bring it into line with current thinking safety wise. Um, it was to make sure that we've got an event in in the next hundred years. You know, I'd like to see the two hundredth anniversary when I, I won't be around to see it, of course, but. Uh, but that's what we'd like to see. But without people being behind the Manx Grand Prix, it just won't survive. Thank you for having the stamina to make it to the end of the Manx Radio Sportscast. You're clearly someone who has their eye on the ball at all times. Want to hear more about the latest sporting news across the Isle of Man and much more? Then might I recommend you take the plunge and subscribe to this series or a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so that, in a flash, all of our finest moments take a winner's place on your smartphone. Thank you.